Hey, y'all. This is episode 10, and I'm super excited. This is Nikki Winston. Welcome to another episode of the Working Mamas podcast. And um, on this podcast, we talk all things business for small business owners and entrepreneurs and freelancers and accounting for accounting students and CPA exam candidates. And we talk about mom life for the working mamas, for the moms who are working in corporate, working in their own businesses or working inside their home, because that too is a full-time job with no days off and no overtime pay. And of course, we talk about career combos. I share the questions I get on LinkedIn and Instagram from professionals at varying levels in their careers who ask me about different things, about trying to start a business while you work full time, or I just graduated from college. How do I make a good impression at my new employer? So... This is a podcast that is not um, your typical podcast. We are that square peg that does not fit into a round hole. So if I talk about just accounting, that will bore people to tears. If I talked about just careers, then that's not applicable to the people who maybe own their own businesses or maybe are full-time stay-at-home moms. So I took everything that I know and everything that I love And I'm talking about it here on the Working Mamas podcast. So thank you for tuning in. This episode today is going to be a short but impactful one. I just really want to talk about failure and specifically to the CPA candidates who are constantly, constantly, constantly dealing with failure, whether it's in your study time and preparation leading up to exam day, whether it's actually on exam day and then you get that score release and it's two pages, which means that you failed because if it's if you pass this one page. So I want to talk about failure just at a high level, but specifically to those candidates, because my my DMs have been blowing up my LinkedIn. I've been getting a lot of messages from candidates who are like, I failed, what what do I do? Or how did you pass far? I'm about to take it for the third time and I don't know what I'm doing wrong. And the first thing I wanna say is that I've gotten to the point at 38 years young where failure has just been an integral part of my life. And I just looked at it like, okay, at least that's progress. At least I went for it. At least I jumped out there and maybe it didn't work, but I know how to switch it up for next time. I know what to do the second time around so that I can be successful. So I probably have learned more from failing than I have with successes because, I mean, I just remember my mama telling me, ain't nobody gonna give you shit. And that was always how she said it. So, you know, that's true. Nobody's just going to drop something in your lap. You have to go out and work for it. And the the step that you take when you get up and work for it is usually where the failure occurs. So I just look at it like it's just a function of me moving in the right direction and me trying all of the what I think are fabulous ideas that come into my mind and I just see what works. And I think I've become not accustomed, I'll never be accustomed to failing, but maybe now that I have experienced failure in a lot of different ways, I kind of know how to move when it comes around or when I feel like It can be on the horizon, right? So I just say embrace those failures because, and and, and I'll I'll even talk about the CPA exam because I thought that, and I told myself that when I started taking the exam back in September of 2014, 
that I was going to pass all four sections in six months with two kids, a demanding career, a household, a husband, myself, my friends, my family, and a damn partridge in a pear tree. And so I, I put unnecessary stress on myself because NASBA actually gives us 18 months. And when I talk to students, I just spoke at the NABA Southern Region Student Conference last week, and I did a CPA exam session with some candidates. Some of them had already taken sections. Some of them were just kind of trying to answer the question of, are they ready for it? Are they ready for the challenge? And so I even told them, like, give yourself 12 months. Because I I know what it's like to put unrealist, unrealistic expectations on yourself. And it ended up taking me way more than six months, way more than 12 months to pass. Um, almost four years. 1,373 days. Y'all have probably heard me reference that number before. And I learned so much about myself over that time. And I... um. Let me get some water. I'm still about um, maybe 10 or 20 percent stuffy, congested. I'm trying to fight this cold, which I feel good today. Um, I felt terrible maybe two or three days ago. So, again, progress is progress. But um, I mean, I know what it's like to put these unrealistic expectations on yourself, but as long as you have an end goal in mind, don't just do something indefinitely, not being clear and firm on what the outcome should be. So I like to tell students, give yourself the time, allow yourself to learn. That's the thing that we keep skipping. Allow yourself to learn, to become immersed in the content because the challenge doesn't start or the challenge doesn't end when you finish the exam it's just beginning because all of this stuff that you've been studying trying to figure out trying to memorize trying to calculate now you have to go out into the world and show your clients your boss your employer what you can do and you can't think about a formula that you memorize or a mnemonic that you tried to remember for the exam when you're sitting at your client's office getting paid to solve their problems, your real client with real problems who's paying you real money to solve those problems. You have to know, or at least if you don't know, have the diligence to find out and know where to go for help. In, in trying to source information. So embrace the failures. I mean, in terms of the CPA exam, the failures are very subjective, right? I mean, the, the, the exam is a challenge and that's, that's no debate. I mean, the highest score you can get is a 99. So the exam is a challenge. But unlike being at work, if you're at work and you're working on the project and the project just goes south and fails terribly, you're going to get some direct feedback, whether it's solicited or not, about the specific things that went wrong. Maybe your communication wasn't the best. Maybe the vendors had poor service. I mean, there's so many different things that I feel this nasal nasaliness coming back. But there's so many different factors that go into something going wrong. And in a corporate setting, you'll know specifically what those things are. You're never going to know those specific questions that you got wrong. When you get your score release, you'll see if you're stronger, comparable or weaker than other candidates who set in the same window as you. But it might say that you were stronger in corporate governance and weaker in operations management. So what exactly does that mean? What specific component 
of operations management do I need to go back and study? And that's kind of up to you as the candidate to figure out. And I think that's where a lot of candidates kind of lose their steam and their momentum because they're not sure how to come back and how to bounce back after that failure. Because a lot of them quit. I mean, we've seen the stats. White candidates tend to quit at maybe 10, 11 percent. Hispanics are probably double that. And then black candidates are triple that, like 30, 34 percent. We've all hopefully seen those stats before. And a lot of that is because they just feel like, well, why can't I pass? Am I not smart enough? Am I not getting this? Am I not meant for this? Am I just not grasping this? And the CPA exam will take you on this roller coaster of emotions where you're excited one day because you finally mastered the COSO cube. I mean, or you finally understand absorption versus direct costing, or you understand the the different ways to prepare the statement of cash flows and you celebrate that. But then you go to another topic and you just don't get it. And so you start to doubt your ability. You start to question if this is even worth it. And then you take the exam. You get a 73 and then you quit. Because we all want the glory right now. You have to work for this. The glory is a beautiful thing. But again, it's not just dropped into your lap. You have to be willing to put in the work. And so that's why when I created my course, my CPA exam review course, I wanted to create it so that the candidates could have access to me. So the candidates can be able to ask me questions and say, I just did this practice exam. I have no idea how to complete this simulation help. Because that's what they're missing. And I love to do that. And I feel like I have to do that because I spent a lot of time trying to figure all this out. And I don't want another candidate to spend three and a half years like I did trying to get there. But back to failure, I appreciate those three and a half years because I don't think I would be doing this if I would have passed the exam in like six months, like I planned, or probably not even in a year. I don't think I would have been as vested. I wouldn't have understood the real struggle of what it's like trying to work full time and study so many um so many CPA candidates are moms and they have kids and they're trying to figure out how am I supposed to have kids that are school aged and take care of them and still find time to study because motherhood itself is another full time job. There's no vacation. There's no overtime. There's no bonus. Well, there's no monetary bonus. There's a lot of just motherhood bonuses, but Another situation, another conversation for another day. But I mean, I I really don't feel like I would be trying to help candidates pass if I didn't understand the struggle. And I purchased some or all of every major CPA review course out there. So I have a feel for how they operate. And I mean, I get it. You know, you put out your your uh, your textbooks and your videos, but when did you take the exam? Did you take the exam six years ago or 60 years ago or 20 years ago? Because the computerized exam is new. And I think it came out 2004. The year I graduated from Fisher. So, yeah, it's about 15 years old. It's not that old. So I just found it difficult to learn how to prepare for this exam from somebody who is talking to me on the video that took the exam maybe 30 years ago. Like, I just I can't. The pen and paper and the computerized are 
two different experiences. So that's why with my course, I make myself available to to walk my students through those difficult topics, but also sometimes we have to put the content aside and just talk about the mindset and the mental fortitude that this journey requires because I've tutored so many students and every single one of them have had a component of nervousness or uneasiness or anxiety about this exam. They have either rescheduled tests or canceled them all together just because of their mental, the the mental mindset about the exam. And I mean, I'm going to put it off and try it another time. I don't think this is working out. I mean, just so many different things. And I'm like, I sat and watched you and worked with you as you as you have studied for weeks and months. Like you were fine and you were motivated when you were studying. But then when we get a week or two weeks from exam day, all that anxiety kicks in. And and I get it. I, I have felt it several times, 13 times to be exact. So I know what it feels like. But now that I'm on the other side, it's like, look, don't don't let the uneasiness consume you because it's really not that difficult. Especially if you've studied for weeks and months at a time, it's not it's not that difficult. And I say that because we overcomplicate the exam with our emotional fears. So I hear candidates who say, oh, my God, far is so hard. And they haven't even sat for the exam before. And I'm like, how do you know? How do you know that far is hard? Because you letting other people get in your head and influence your thinking. And you feel like, well, if they said it's hard for them, it's going to be hard for me, too. Actually, far was the easiest section for me. And that was because that was my job. Far, The FAR content was my full-time job for about five years. So it was easy for me. So don't, don't allow yourself to be swayed one way or the other when it comes to the exam, because people still say BEC is easy. And my thing is don't sleep on business and economic concepts. It's actually my favorite section for some weird ass reason, but BEC content does not build like FAR content does where you have the transactions and then those transactions become journal entries and then those journal entries become financial statements. So don't don't underestimate the beast that BEC is because you have to know internal control and corporate governance and the COSO cube and references to Enron and supply and demand and market structures and oligopolies and monopolies and recessions and expansions and and peaks and troughs and operations management, cost accounting, materials variances, purchase price variances, um, you know, labor efficiency and the usage variances and process costing and absorption costing versus direct costing. I mean, and none of that shit is related. You can't go from corporate governance and build on what you know and apply that to cost accounting. It's five totally unrelated sections. So you have your corporate governance, you have um, market structures and the economy, and then operations management, information technology, and I'm forgetting one of the sections. I know that I am, but um, it's unrelated. So don't allow what somebody thinks or feels about the exam to influence your thinking. Because I know a ton of people who feel like FAR is, FAR was hard, the hardest. So embrace the failures, use that as motivation to go harder the next time. At least you'll know what you did wrong, how you need to 
pivot or what you need to work on and you can fix that and be successful the next time around. So hit me up. Let me know what you're thinking. My email is Nikki at Nick Winston CPA.com. Um, I actually changed my email from the hello because I just felt like it was a little impersonal or unpersonal, impersonal, whatever. But hit me up. Let me know what you think. I'm on Instagram and Twitter at Nick Winston CPA. And of course, I'm answering career combos and CPA exam questions on LinkedIn. So hit me up. Would love to hear from you. And I will talk to y'all later. Bye.